What's up guys, Patrick here, tour guide and your guide to Barcelona, back with another Barcelona walk, and this time we're checking out the Barceloneta neighborhood, heading down closer to the beach, so let's get moving. You can see behind me right now, we have the History Museum of Catalonia and then the port, so we're getting closer to the water. Like I said, that's the idea to get over towards the beach, cover a different neighborhood, one that is very, very visited. So you know where we are right now. We're on Juan de Borbo, and that cuts down straight to the water. And in the back, you have more of that old city. The Gothic Quarter of the Bourne, actually just right over there. And the Barceloneta is really known more, I guess, for that beach right now, where a lot of people are gonna be coming down and visiting, but it was actually a different part of the city and that name Barceloneta, so Little Barcelona, really comes from the fact that it was separated from the city. And so when you have that whole born area and even into the Citadella Park, what the Citadella Park was, was just what that name is, it was the Citadel. And so when they decided to basically destroy all of the houses that were in that area, the people had to move to a different place and where there was land was basically over in this Barceloneta area. And we'll talk more about that as we see the, the streets. We're gonna hop off. I always mark this spot right here. We got Burger King, one of the best restaurants in the area. <laughs> Just playing. But I always tell people, once you see that Burger King making your way in, start to come down the street Ginebra because you're gonna find one of my favorite restaurants in Barcelona, which is Haika. We're coming up to that right now. And you'll notice again here, there's difference in the streets. It's all very kind of linear and gridded. Just from the layout, how everything was built. You can see we're over at Haika right here. And that's one of my favorite spots. There's actually a bigger one here. And then just a block down, there's the smaller version of it. And it's a great spot for all sorts of different tapas and especially all of that seafood over here. Now you'll notice kind of some differences within the streets, like we said. Now, what happened when they moved everybody over here is that this land wasn't really used. And in fact, it was cut off from uh, Barcelona, realistically, where the walls had ended before just actually back from where we started, just across the street, you can still see some of the walls that are left over. And then even later, when the Estación Franza goes up and the train station comes in, it's gonna be basically cut off from the city. And it's not gonna be really connected in as much to the city like it is today until basically the Olympics. And the Olympics just changed everything around here. But like I was saying before, when everybody was kind of displaced from that Bourne area, what they did is they looked for a new spot. And this had been more of the port. And because of Barcelona's location right on the sea and that being so important during the Middle Ages, what they started doing was building basically kind of like a little pier out that slowly started to gain more and more importance. And it started to gain more and more space and it kind of using that area that was being created with the flow of the ocean, of the sea, bringing down um, different pieces of the land, kind of extending out, it started to build out a little bit more and more and almost like a little landfill created this area. And so they started moving people over here. Now the houses are a little bit taller than they would have been but at the time they would have been just maybe one, one story. And those have started to build up now, especially when later the sailors started to move in here. So you also get some really small apartments. Expensive now, not only for the meters that they are, the square meters, but for the location, which is right on the beach after that. Like we said, the Olympic Games just changed everything right in here. We've made our way down into Plaza de Barceloneta. And you can see behind me, gets a good view, there is the church. That's 
St. Michael, San Miguel Church. Right back there, you can see the statue of the Archangel just right up top in here. You can see an idea for the entirety of the plaza. And this is actually an area that has just been packed with tourism, like we're saying. Just right on the beach, you got a lot of people that come in. And there's actually a story where they found a drunk girl inside the church on the altar. And that was one of the big things that started to get a lot of movement within the last couple of years. There's been a lot of complaints, not only with the number of apartments. And I saw a video the other day, actually, that said there's about 9,000 apartments or housing units around here. And about 1,500 of those are used for tourist activities, at least. And so the big, big discussion has been about the amount of tourism that's been coming in and really affecting this area. And so one of the things that you'll see a lot in the neighborhood are these flags. There's a couple of them just right up here. Let's see if I can get that for you. You can see on that balcony, there's a flag and that's the Barceloneta flag. You can see even the, the, the year in there, 1753. It says Barceloneta and you've got the kind of Barceloneta crest. And these started going up on a lot of different balconies a couple of years back because of all of that tourism. Kind of saying we want this area to be more for, for the neighbors. We don't want all of this tourism coming in because what happens is there's also a lot of bars and a lot of clubs in this area. So a lot of people were coming back, making a lot of noise and really disturbing the peace in the neighborhood. And so you saw the response to that with a lot of, of these flags that were coming in. So we're getting into the big, big plaza in the center here, which is a nice place for everybody to come and hang out. And you've also got the market right in the center here. Big, big open square you can see we're getting into. And a lot of the different restaurants, a lot of the different bars surrounding here are some staples in the neighborhood. I'll get you some views. Get over into the sun. Always love the buildings like we can see out here. And then you've got the market in the back. And what you find here are not a lot of stores maybe like in some of the other neighborhoods. Uh, in Gracia, which we've already visited, uh, or even into the Bourne. But you see a lot of kind of the neighborhood stores, right? Places to grab your vegetables, your fruits, your meats and everything. And even you have the nice, the nice market right there. You've got some bars on the inside and you get an idea for the architecture in the area these kind of skinnier thinner buildings and now some of them building up a little bit higher but again they would have been lower at the beginning what you also have is a lot of different little park areas for the kids right again this is another area that's much oh, another this is another area that is much, uh, much more local as well. Just saved a ping pong ball from running too far over there. And so when you get down here a little bit closer, you've got some very, very famous bars. Actually where I had, where I had breakfast this morning got Cova Fumada, which is spectacular. One of those places that just gets absolutely packed in the morning. When they sell out of all their food, they basically close. They're not even open a lot of times in the afternoon. And then Electricitat, which is another one of those places. Kind of staple in the neighborhood, very local spot. All sorts of tapas in both of those places. And some really good places to grab some, some drinks. And then we're running down the drag right here, which I always love, with a bunch of different little cafes to sit out at. Fermin, the bodega there, I've always liked that interior. The Taberna, Iberia. You have these little places just to sit out and enjoy the, the atmosphere. The 
coming down and I can start to see the sea, the Mediterranean coming into focus here. We've got some views out just on the side. Over there, the port, still on the other side, that old port, still on the other side. And then this gives you kind of an idea of how these are built, very linear kind of streets that are cutting through down to the beach. And remember we are saying these are put in, kind of displacing everybody from that bourne, putting in that citadel, and all of this had to be lower so that that citadel could still have views to the sea. And so that's why these are built kind of in, this, in these directions right here. Now build up higher, but again, would have been lower to have those views out, out to the seas. And you can see streets like this that go just straight out to that Mediterranean. So again, why it's kind of prime real estate here for all of those tourists coming in. And that's where you get a lot of these apartments for tourism. You have some of these houses down still on the ground floor, but you'll also find little bakeries, little bars, all around. And so it's one of those places you kind of want to just get around and explore through all these streets because there's so many little different places. The idea through here, you have to see we're just right out about a block away now from the sea. Obviously, paddleboard, surfing, not so much. You can, but the waves don't get too big in Barcelona. More surfing up in the Atlantic Ocean where you go up to San Sebastian, uh, and the Basque Country, even out to Galicia and stuff. That's bigger waves for surfing, but you'll still find a bunch of surfers out here. You can see the shop back there dedicated to that surfing. More paddle boarding, so you get really very, very calm water out here. And here we are. You can see the sea. We've got some construction going on. Here, Nike opened up a special kind of entrepreneurship spot right back there. And then obviously the prime spots to have all of your bars, all of your restaurants come out, sit on the Mediterranean, right on the San Miguel Beach. got the famous structure right there just supposed to represent the different beaches see it out a lot of people playing volleyball and it's really Obviously, without the tourism, it's really pretty empty compared to what it would be. But what you can see is that even on December days, we've got really nice weather, sun out, so people are still out on the beach. And then you always have these little sand castles being built out on the side, out on the walk. And like I said, all of this has really changed for the Olympic Games. And so a lot of the sand is brought in from Egypt to really reconstruct this entire area. And what you would have had were some chiringuitos, little restaurants, little bars along the way. Actually, some of those are missing here. Usually we would have had some out here before, but even a little bit further down, you get towards the, you can see the map free insurance tower, and then even the arts hotel, you would have had these other kind of almost like little neighborhoods so Morrostro Beach, 
which would have had people living there and with all of the immigration that was coming in uh, in the 50s, 60s, even 70s, 80s, there wasn't really space. And so a lot of people were living in the beach. And if you look back at some of these older pictures, you can see the amounts of little kind of like shanty towns or shacks that would have been along here. And all of that was moved out to different areas, La Mina, places like that, for ahead of those 1992 Olympic Games, which just, well, it changed everything in Barcelona. And that's where you get all of this idea for tourism today. And down from the end, you can see kind of just these kilometers of beach that we have extending all the way down towards that area known as as the Forum. You have the W Hotel in the back. Right there, that kind of marks the very beginning. And then all of these different little beaches, these little coves that stretch on down. Kind of come into the, the end, the tip right here of that Barceloneta. Going down further, you have the Club Natacio the Swimming Club for Barcelona, and then the hotel. See, it's a beautiful day out for us today. And you also have, if you ever come, I always recommend right back here, you've got the cable car, the port cable car. You'll see a lot of different offers for cable cars over into Monjuic, but this will take you from the bottom of Barceloneta here. It'll take you up to the top, to the lookout point on Monjuic, and I always recommend taking that up. It's really, really nice, but even better, taking it down, and then you land over here, and what you get is options for a nice little lunch, a little paella, or anything along the way, and you'll find a bunch of different restaurants, and like I said, even further down, some some other bars, Escriba, you have to walk a little bit from here, but it's a really nice one right in here. And there you go, look at that. It's kind of beautiful, beautiful, beautiful views. Don't see anybody in the water. There's a paddle border out there, but I don't see many people in the water. It's probably really, really cold to get in there today. But you can see coming down from the top of Juan Borbo, where we in, where we started, right just back over here. If we had come straight down, this is where we would have entered. But we walked a little bit through the Barceloneta, got an idea a little bit for some of those back streets. Again, always more to experience, more to see. So I'd like to get some more videos out. But let me know what you guys thought about the video. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Let me know other areas you want to see in Barcelona and subscribe to see more videos just like this one. See you next time.